Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to show you how I care for the Golem Jade and how I've propagated it in the past. This is very similar to the regular Crastula ovata or the regular Jade plant, but obviously the main difference between the two is obviously the leaf shape. These are uh, round cylindrical type leaves. It's also called Shrek's ears as some of the leaves resemble a uh, Shrek from Disney's uh, looks like his ears. This plant is four years old. It was actually taken from a uh, just a small little cutting uh, from one of my floral conservatories. I couldn't find this specific jade plant in any of my local plant stores so I asked uh, one of the volunteers if they uh, ever uh, prune their plants and if they sell their cuttings and she said uh, which plant do you want and so she took a pair of scissors walked over to the plant and snipped off a couple leaves and it has now grown into this tree-like structure and it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's one of my favorite uh, succulents that I uh, currently own. I, if you watch this channel, you know that I love jade plants. So I'm gonna, yeah, just run through some things that I do uh, to care for these plants and get them in this kind of like tree-like structure. So let's get into it. I'm gonna talk about light first as I think it's one of the most important uh, features or requirements for a jade plant. They absolutely love a bright sunny location. I have mine in a south facing window. It's about a foot back and I'll show you that here in a second. But if you have a south facing window or even a west facing window, I think that would probably be the best location as they require, I would say at minimum of uh, four to six hours of uh, bright light throughout the day. Mine gets direct sunlight for pretty much the entire day. So if you move it to like a highlight or direct light uh, location. You just want to make sure that you slowly, I guess, acclimate it to that location. So just every uh, maybe once a week or once every two weeks, just uh, slowly move it to that higher light. Otherwise, you might get some leaf burn. I have taken one of my jade plants out in the summer, so they not only love uh, a bright location, but they also love heat. So if you take it out in the summer, just maybe put it in kind of like a shady spot for the first little bit and then slowly introduce it into a brighter location. I probably wouldn't put it in like full sun throughout the summer because you'll probably have to water these like daily. So yeah, I'll probably take this one out in the summer as well. They grow really, really fast when exposed to that uh, brighter light as well as the heat. Just want to show the type of light that it gets right now. This is a little plant table just about a foot back from my south facing window. I use this digital light meter. It is in the foot candle setting and you can see when directed or pointed at the light source, it's around 5,000 foot candles. It's saying 500, uh, but it's actually times by 10. So it's around that four to 5,000 foot candles, which is an extremely highlight location. Highlight plants or highlight levels is uh, usually around that 1,000 uh, foot candles or more. So this is a really good location for a jade plant. They require a lot of sunlight. Just make sure you put it in the brightest location. And if you don't have like a, like a really sunny area, you can also use uh, grow lights as well to supplement a, uh, uh, the jade plant and its light. I do have my larger jade plant at the back here and it's under these uh, grow bulbs and it uh, really likes that light source. It's a consistent, I think I have it for about 12 hours a day and it's getting a lot of new growth. So it does like the grow lights as well as natural sunlight. One of the tricky things about jade plants when you first start out is not knowing when to water them. Obviously, you wanna make sure that the soil is completely dry. So this is absolutely bone dry. Like it's, it's actually pretty rock hard. It uh, may need a repotting soon, but um, you wanna make sure that the soil is completely dry. I also use the weight of the pot as a, uh, a way to tell if it needs a, a watering or not. So um, after you've had this plant for a little while, you get used to how the plant feels when it is well watered compared to uh, when it is dry. And the most important thing I do is I will always tell if the plant needs to be watered by the leaves. You can see this leaf right here, you can bend. I'm gonna pick some of the larger ones, like this one here. You can bend them quite easily. Jade plant leaves, they should be pretty rigid. This one's not too bad. They're usually very rigid because they are uh, full of water. This one, you can see, you can bend it. You should not be able to bend a jade leaf. I'm gonna come over to my large jade plant here as well. Same thing. You should not be able to fold or bend a jade leaf. They should be quite rigid. Once you get to this phase, then they will definitely need to be watered. Um, I guess you have to pay attention to the soil as well. So if it's dry and you can bend the leaves, then uh, it needs to be watered. I think one of the misconceptions that I sometimes hear out there is that jade plants don't like a lot of water. So that's not really entirely true. They like a good thorough soaking. So I will soak the soil, but I will let it dry out completely. Um, jade plants don't like to sit in soggy soil for very long. They have very fine, um, very thin roots, so they don't tolerate 
uh, damp soil or wet soil for very long, which uh, that leads to root rot. So there's a couple things that I do to, I guess, minimize that. Uh, one of them being uh, choosing the right soil. So I only use a succulent and cactus mix. It does have some sand content in there as well as a perlite and uh, I, I would I guess it's like a peat moss type thing, but um, it just allows for a really fast draining soil. So it, uh, it holds onto some moisture, but it doesn't retain it for too long. Another thing is the pot. I like to use terracotta. It's very porous. It, uh, it's good at absorbing soil moisture. So it pulls the excess moisture from the soil and basically it evaporates it out. You can see there's some staining on it. That's just uh, from the uh, uh, water minerals that um, are excreted through the uh, pot here. So I like to use a succulent cactus soil as well as a terracotta pot and that uh, controls the soil moisture. But I do soak these and I'll do that here in a second because like I said, um, well actually these leaves are okay at the bottom here. So if you see some that, oops, I just broke this one, shoot. If you see some that are uh, flimsy or flexible and some that are rigid, it could probably hold off on water for a few days, but I'm gonna water mine here anyways. It's uh, getting a lot of light now, now that spring is just around the corner. So it's gonna be starting, it actually is starting to push out some new growth. So it's uh, definitely uh, woken up from its uh, winter kind of dormant state. I just use filtered tap water for all my succulents and I'm simply just going to pour in the water, let it uh, soak through, and I'll probably do this a couple times until it comes out the bottom of the drain hole. You can see it's draining through quite quickly, and that's what you wanna see, is it basically just soaking right through and coming out the bottom. Nothing's coming out yet, so I'm gonna keep giving it some water. Like I said, I'm just gonna soak the soil, but I will let it dry out completely before I give it any water again. These bubbles, mean that there's little uh, dry air pockets. You just want to make sure that the soil is saturated not only on the sides but um, throughout the entire soil. So it's just starting to come out the bottom there, just a couple of little drips. So I'll probably give it one more soaking here. Just fill it up just to the top there. Let it kind of bubble and drip down. And this is probably all the water I'm going to give it. I can already feel that this is significantly heavier and it's coming out the bottom. So I'm gonna let that soak through and that should be a good uh, amount of water for this plant. You can probably even do it one more time, but I watered this maybe like a week and a half ago, so I'm not gonna give it any more water. I'm gonna let it uh, use up this water before I give it any more, because I don't want it to die. It's been with me for a while now. So as long as you have it in the right type of soil and the pot, you can't really overwater these plants just because it'll use the, um, the soil moisture uh, pretty fast, but it also, like I said, evaporates out and that sort of thing. So if you have the correct setup for it, it's really tough to overwater a, a succulent. And it's that can be said for all types of houseplants. So if you're using like, uh, if you have like an aeroid, uh, like a Monstera or a Philodendron or anything like that, if you're using a really chunky mix, it's really hard to overwater a plant. If you use just like a regular potting soil, that absorbs or retains moisture uh, much longer than a succulent cactus soil. So if you put regular potting mix in with a succulent, you will most likely get root rot as it just retains that soil moisture for too long. I do fertilize my succulents and this is what I've been using lately. It's just a liquid plant fertilizer. It's got like a little uh, eyedropper type thing and you basically just add, it says seven drops to one liter of water. For the first fertilizer of the season, and that's coming up pretty quick here as uh, spring is approaching, I might cut this in half for the first uh, dose and then just follow the recommended uh, seven drops per one liter of water. Add it to the watering can, just mix it up and then just water as um, you normally would. So I would just soak the soil completely and let it come out with the bottom of the drain hole. But yeah, I will maybe fertilize once a month uh, through the growing season of uh, spring and summer. So I think that's all I pretty much have to talk about in regards to care. Now for issues with these plants, I really haven't had too many, uh, I guess, pest issues or anything. I know these are prone to mealybugs, which I've never had uh, yet on these plants and I hope I never do, but um, they're usually like little white uh, cotton fuzz type looking bugs that live in the uh, cracks and crevices of your plant. So if you see like, kind of white fuzz, it's probably mealybugs. So just go Google that and it's pretty easy to care for, I guess. Um, it's just a little bit difficult uh, to get them out of these cracks and that sort of thing. So basically you just uh, take a Q-tip with some uh, rubbing alcohol and just kind of wipe them down and just obviously uh, keep treating it as you uh, see the mealybugs. But like I said, I've never had to deal with that. So 
uh, thank goodness. Another issue I've seen are these, I don't know if it'll focus here or not, but these uh, little white spots, see if I can get a good one. There are little white spots on the leaves, that is normal. Uh, there's a little bit right there. It's not focusing, come on. You can see right there, that's just uh, uh, the plant excreting some, I think it's just calcium, so you can actually just rub that uh, white deposits off and it doesn't harm the plant or anything like that. I never really spray down the leaves, or I don't miss the plant, I should say. Um, the only time I ever spray down the leaves is when it's really dusty, I'll just uh, clean it off, but you don't want to mist these uh, leaves as they're very susceptible to kind of uh, like a, a, a leaf fungus. Um, leaf burn on the leaves will basically look like black spots. Not spots, but more like, um, almost like a bruise. It looks like a, I don't even know if I have any examples of leaf burn on this plant right now, but it basically looks like a, a bruise on the leaf. Um, but yeah, otherwise, if it's like spots, then it's probably like a fungal infection type thing. Um, it is common, like this right here, for the occasional leaf to fall off. There's a few right here as well. Uh, once it gets a little bit yellow, so this one's like super dehydrated, it'll basically just fall off on its own. But um, I think that's all there was, was just a couple that were starting to yellow. So the occasional leaf drop, that's normal. But if you start to get a lot of leaves that are just falling off the plant, you might want to pull it out of the pot and just check the roots, make sure it's not uh, root rot or anything like that. Maybe root bound as well. But for the most part, J plants can tolerate like a smaller pot like this plant, or this pot's only about a four inch pot, and this is a pretty large tree. They have very shallow roots, so you don't typically need a large pot. If you have something too large, then that just, uh, you're setting yourself up for root rot as there is uh, more soil, I guess, or more soil that'll retain moisture for too long. So I don't know if that makes sense either. Now I'm just starting to ramble again. So um, yeah, they can tolerate small pots. Propagation of jade plants is super, super easy. I got a couple examples down here of just single leaf cuttings. I've just literally plucked a leaf off like this. You can just twist it off, put it in the soil like that. It will draw all the moisture off the leaf to uh, start roots itself. And you can see down here, um, it is starting to get some new little growth. These ones have been in the pot for a little while. So this is probably, I don't know, I would say nine, 10 months worth of growth. The original leaf, it looks like it's gone already. And here's another one as well. So they do start to root um, into the soil and start their own new little plant. Got another little guy right there too. So that is one um, easy way to, uh, to propagate a J plant. Another one is taking a stem cutting. You may wanna take some stem cuttings for a couple reasons to uh, obviously prune the plant in a certain way. So if you want it to branch out, you just uh, snip off a portion of the stem and it should start to branch out in two separate areas. I think it's very similar to how the uh, regular J plant is. You also might want to take a, a cutting to start an entirely new plant as well. And it's simply just taking your pruning shears and cutting off a, uh, a little section and uh, just let that end callus over for a couple days. And then I just usually stick it right back in the soil and uh, it'll uh, root fairly nice on its own. I've never really had any problems with just straight soil propagation. I do have a, a, a water propagated uh, jade, a regular jade cutting from a little while ago. The roots look black, but um, yeah, I don't know. I let it dry out once and now they're looking black. You can propagate in water, but I prefer the just straight soil method as there's no transition period from water roots to soil. It's just a, a really easy uh, method, just uh, letting it calce over, literally stick in soil and it will eventually grow. You don't have to water it for about the first week or so, because like I said, um, the jade plant, it pulls a lot of the moisture from the leaves and it'll root itself in soil. So don't water it for about the first week and just lightly water afterwards, um, not soaking the entire soil, just maybe uh, watering just around the cutting kind of thing and it should do fine. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate all the support. Take care everyone. Bye.